May the Fourth be with you. That's right. In celebration of Star Wars, May the Fourth has become an unofficial Star Wars day. Uh, making fun of May the Fourth uh, be with you. The famous phrase from the franchise movies, which actually did debut traditionally in the month of May. So it's actually a nice coincidence. Hi, I'm Joshua Stallman, and I'm from BrooklynComicShop.com, where we specialize in vintage books, signed exclusives, art, prints, action figures, and much more. Anything you see in the video today will be listed on our website, so you can order anything I show you. But today we're going to be taking a look at Star Wars comics, some of the script, as well as some of the action figures from the 1980s hit series, which has become a major billion dollar franchise. What you're looking at right now is a reprint of Star Wars number one. This reprint was issued by Marvel Comics, who originally did the series in the 1970s as part of their licensing uh, deals that they were making during the time with Marvel and with other TV and movie properties like Godzilla, um, Battlestar Galactica, 2001 Space Odyssey, and of course, Star Wars. And the person who really pushed for the Star Wars franchise in Marvel Comics was Roy Thomas, and he saw the potential for Star Wars to be really huge right at the onset before there was even a movie out. Now, what Roy Thomas didn't know is that Marvel wasn't doing very well financially, and Star Wars really helped push the company and save it from possibly going into bankruptcy in the late 70s. So we have Roy Thomas to thank for still having Star Wars to begin with in Marvel Comics. Now, in the 1990s, uh, Marvel lost the right to Star Wars. It hadn't really been um, a comic book for a while, and Dark Horse got it. And when Dark Horse did it, they did an entire series of Star Wars comics, which now are kind of written out and kind of not written out. Um, and then eventually Marvel uh, was bought by Disney, and Star Wars eventually returned back to Marvel, and we got this reprint number one. Now, the reprint is actually signed by Howard Chaykin, who did the artwork uh, on the first... Uh, I want to say 10 issues of Star Wars, definitely the first six, which adapts the original story, uh, also written by Roy Thomas, who also signed this book. Now, what's great about Star Wars number one is it's based on the original movie script and not the cut of the movie that we saw in um, theaters. And so what you're going to have is some scenes in this that were actually not in the original, um, that were in the original script, but not shot, that didn't make it to the final um movie version. Uh, the original tracking for introducing Luke Skywalker and uh, some of the other scenes that we see is Luke Skywalker hanging out with his friend Biggs and the rest of them at um, I think Mos Eisley or wherever they're hanging out. Uh, you see um, a little bit of Biggs referenced and in the special editions I think they showed um, Biggs as a starfighter pilot at the end. This kind of is the beginning of that conversation that they really didn't show. Um, so the Marvel comics were kind of interesting because it not only showed the early drafts and how it was going to look, but also um, continued after the movie when people still wanted Star Wars stuff. Uh, here you have Star Wars number six, which is the finale. It's signed by Howard Chaykin. Rick Hoberg and Tom Palmer did some of the inking work on it, and Roy Thomas also. Um, and this is a first print, which you can see. Has a little bit of a sun shadow, but still a really nice looking copy with some rare signatures. Now after uh, we finished with issue 6, Star Wars just continued coming out. And so what they had to do is continue to uh, tell the story. The seven number 7 and 8 dealt with Han Solo going back to Jabba, like he said, at the end of Star Wars. And uh, trying to pay him off, and of course something comes up, and you're introduced to a new Jedi Knight. Uh, a bunny, and... Of course, uh, some of the other characters that you will see. Thanks, Javier Marino. I like uh, that you're liking my stuff. Um, Howard Chaykin, Tom Palmer, and Roy Thomas also worked on it. So we have them signed here as well. Now, what's interesting is uh, Darth Vader, they kind of kept out of the comics, kind of. Um, they didn't want to have too much conflict with the main heroes only because what were they going to say in the movies? And, of course, George Lucas didn't really want that explored in the comics. Uh, what's fun to note about this is... Signed by Carmen Infantino, which was a big deal uh, for me when I met him uh, many years ago now that he's died. Um, signing it in red, but still really, really fun to have something by a classic comic artist and, of course, a Star Wars artist from back in the day. 
so the story's kind of led up to Empire Strikes Back, and after Empire Strikes Back, there was a little bit more regulations on what could be said and what couldn't be said in the Marvel versions of Star Wars. Um, Empire Strikes Back ended, I think, around number 45 or 40, 44 in the Star Wars run. This is number 50. And with number 50, you get some great um, artwork. Walt Simonson now joins the team as the um, um, monthly artist on Star Wars. So you get some really nice, a little bit better rendering than what you see over here. Carmen Infantino kind of drew the superhero motif. And, it, and uh, Simonson is drawing a little bit more closer to um, kind of what they look like, especially with C-3PO, Leia. The faces are a little bit better. This is a great story by Simonson and Tom Palmer, double-sized, so it's, a, it's actually a pretty full Star Wars story. Uh, issue 101, which is signed by Anne Nascenti, who was the editor and also writer on some of these later Star Wars books. Now, Marvel had Star Wars up to issue 107, so 101 is pretty much towards the end. This has a Bill Sienkiewicz cover, and uh, really great at that. Um, Coming to the very end of the line, it really just explored what happened after Return of the Jedi and how they went about rebuilding the Republic. Now, skipping over a little bit, these were the Marvel books. Uh, now we're going to take a look at two uh, really fun things that we have, which were the scripts to both Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, including complete script of the film, but also, what's great about these books, which were issued at the time that the movies came out, see these are first prints, this came out in 1980, uh, 1983, or 1984. These all include a lot of the concept artwork that would go into the movie. So you have, this is uh, notes by the director. Visual notes, and then concept work. You're going to see some... Original uh, Yoda and Obi-Wan discussions there and the paneling mixed in with the actual script. So when you're seeing these uh, images, you're also seeing the script. And I think these are really fun. Um, they're constantly referenced when you're dealing, especially when you, when you take a look at some of the prototype work. These become a template for some of the work that's happening now. Where are they getting their visual cues from? Where are they getting their aliens from? Uh, they're looking back at some of this production work. And they're saying, oh, gee, let's, uh, let's take that character that looks kind of like Jabba the Hutt, but not exactly like Jabba the Hutt, and let's throw him into a cartoon show, or let's make him a separate character. Some of the uniforms that you see, the Emperor's chair, how's that going to look? Now, I like this one. Um, you can see the evolution of the Ewok, where they come from, some of the bird creatures, looking at stylist hair for Princess Leia. Some really fun ideas that they kind of have meted out in these sketches, some make it on screen and some don't. Even some like, how does the armor work? How does the how do the helmets flip up? How do these ships move? Prototype uh, Princess Leia armor uh, uh, uniforms. Really, a lot of fun stuff. Here's the prototype Jabba stuff that you can see. Um, so if you love Star Wars, these are really great to check out. Finally, where we have moved this all aside, we have some of the original. Star Wars action figures. Um, this is, comes from my collection, actually, but I'm making these available for sale. Kind of slimming down a bit. And uh, these are original Return of the Jedi figures. And what's great about um, the Hasbro, excuse me, the Kenner series is um, they, would, they would do Darth Vader, they would do Luke Skywalker, they would do all the main characters. And they would do them for Star Wars, and then because... Empire Strikes Back came, they would reissue them, and they reissue them again for Return of the Jedi. And then they had the final one, Power of the Force, and they would reissue them again. So these Return of the Jedi figures are the first time that the figures are actually being available to the public because these are Return of the Jedi characters. The ATSD driver was featured in the movie in Return of the Jedi. Here you have Tebow featured in the movie. And what's fun is this comes with an actual... Um, sticker on top, which was placed as a promo offer for Anakin Skywalker figure. Um, this was done, I think this is called a 79 back. I can't exactly see. This. Yeah, 79 back. And this one should be a 77 back. And the 77 back and the 79 back refer to how many figures are listed on the, um, on the back here. So you can collect them all. 
as you move towards the end of the series, you had more figures available. Some of the figures weren't featured on the back of the cards, um, just to keep some of the movie details a secret. Prune Face also was uh, featured in Return of the Jedi with the Anakin sticker here. And these are all mint on card. Some of them have some condition issues. This one has a condition issue with um, some of the wear to the bubble. But the other ones are pretty good. And then finally we have some of the rarest ones. Um, Star Wars Power of the Force. Yak Face. Of course though, I want to make it very clear, it's not the original Power of the Force Yak Face, which would be at least a thousand dollar figure. One of the rarest figures of Star Wars. This is actually the act face done in a retro style, but a modern figure, as you can see some of the articulation here. Uh, but done to look like the Power of the Force figure of the 1980s. And this was specially released with the Jabba Sail Barge that was a pre-order exclusive of only 8,000 and I think 800 or 88, 100, something like that. 8,800 figures um, that were made. So this is actually a pretty rare um, released figure. If you like the Yak Face, you can order it online. If you want to get the Jabba Sail Barge, which includes the Yak Face, you can also order that on our website. So we have a lot of fun things that we talked about today. Some action figures, give you an idea of some Star Wars stuff, some comic books, and some movie prop, uh, movie proto stuff if you're interested really in the history of the film. I hope you enjoyed the um, video. And uh, you can always check out everything at brooklyncomicshop.com for exclusive signed comics, vintage comics, action figures, prints, and much more. Thank you for watching. May the Force be with you.